no bad intentions. Tori pointed that gun at my chest. Bang. I remember the sound. The bullet hit my chest, punctured my right lung, sped through my body, missed my heart, hit my spine, knocked me back onto the bed. I passed out. Tori came running back into the room, hovered over me. Mike, you're faking it, you're faking it. I pulled up my shirt, showed him the hole in my chest. My mom ran back to that blue phone, called 911. Can you imagine how my friend's father felt as he was cruising around the neighborhood in his police car? That there had been a shooting at his address. I have people ask me occasionally if I could go to that, back to that Veterans Day. November 11th, 1977, and change it, would I? My first thought is, of course. But you know, if you'd seen what I'd seen, if you had been where I'd been, and most importantly, if you'd felt what I'd felt, I thank God for pain. Because only when we feel pain do we change. And only when we change do we grow. And only when we grow, do we begin to understand the beauty that lies within each and every one of us in this room. And so I want to remind you amongst all your pain, whether or not you can or you can't stand up, we all have the ability to make a difference and stand out. I started running marathons. July 24th, 1981, the race began. The first 13 miles we're uphill. I'm pushing along. All the ABs are passing me on the uphill. And this guy in a yellow shirt sped by, patted me on the shoulder. Good job, Mike. Don't quit. You're an inspiration. I had the thought, thanks. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Wait till the downhill. <laughs> and then there was the downhill. Picture this. 500 runners looking over their shoulder, seeing eight wheelchairs coming at them at 45 miles an hour. <laughs> Got close to the finish line. Everybody was clapping. That felt good. I had this thought. Wait a minute. Everyone was clapping three hours ago. Now they're clapping at the end. What about the 26 miles in between? That's when I learned that all motivation is self-motivation. We have to get our butts out of bed in the morning and be thankful to be alive. As a junior in high school, I was arm wrestling my weightlifting coach. He was strong. I was stubborn. We're doing our thing. He busted my right arm. <laughs> funny bone broke loose all the way to the palm of my hand. Wasn't funny. Hauled me to the hospital. Put me back together. Did surgery. Put a cast from here to here. Sent me back to school. Now I had four limbs and only this one worked. <laughs> I went in circles for four months. <laughs> Something more important happened in the hospital. They flipped me over, sliced open my back, took that little 38 caliber piece of lead out of my spine, and they handed it to me. And I remember the day I held it in the palm of my right hand. I looked at it, and I started shaking because this little piece of lead symbolized so much loss in my little life. But I can admit to you here this morning, it's about the time I let it go. I got it out of my system. I got the lead out, so to speak. I, I've been sitting on my butt for 30 years, so you won't sit on yours, okay? You know, I forgave my friend. If you can forgive others, if you can ask forgiveness, you can do anything in life. We have a team tradition. Reggie, like a spider monkey, climbs up in the overhead luggage bin. Fits in there perfect. Coach shuts him in there. We start reading the newspaper. They start letting all the ABs like you come on the airplane. <laughs> What's the first thing you're looking to do when you get on the airplane? <laughs> Somebody opens that up and uh, you think your residents have bladder problems. <laughs> This is the bullet that came out of my back. It's part of me. It's closed a lot of doors. It's opened many others. I hope I'm a better person in some way because of this bullet. 
We all have bullets in life, don't we? I have a challenge for you. Do me a favor. Look inside yourself. Find that disability, that bullet, and be willing to start the journey today in overcoming it. And I promise you, with our pains in life, if we will attach a purpose and a meaning, it makes it all worth it and bearable. When I reflect back to some key moments in my life, when my grandma Schlappy brought me that cherry Slurpee, she taught me to laugh. My dad taught me I could still be a great athlete. Wendy and my wife taught me that love and caring and compassion make the world go around. Tori taught me we need to forgive ourselves. But the greatest lesson I learned in life, I learned from my good mother. Once she said, Mike, if you can't stand up, stand out. <laughs>